Hey there, good morning. How are you? Got a story for you, but first of all, an email from my mother. I woke up to this this morning. Subject line, your face. Michael, your father and I are enjoying your little stories on Facebook. It sure would be nice, though, if you would comb your hair and shave. As you probably know, Facebook, like television, is a visual medium and appearances matter. Toward that end, button up your shirt. Who do you think you are? Fabio? Happy Fourth of July. We love you. And no, we still don't understand how to download a podcast. <laughs> love, Mom. Oh. Moms, what can one do? Um, I don't think you fully appreciate, Mom, the uh, tenor and tone I'm, I'm shooting for here with these little weekend tete-a-tetes. You know, uh, you don't just jump out of bed on a Saturday morning, dive in the shower, get your hair just right, shave, and then button your shirt all the way up to the top. Doing so is, is counterintuitive to the uh, intimate, spontaneous vibe I'm hoping to impart to three and a half million virtual friends. This is, uh, I mean, it's very Ed Grimley. I don't think anybody wants to see that on a Saturday morning. So let's compromise, shall we? About like that. <laughs> Regarding downloading the podcast, and I'm speaking now not only to my mother, but uh, many of you, 500,000 people watched this little story uh, thing last weekend. I, uh, 110,000 listened to it over on iTunes. I got to get the iTunes number up to 150. I'm just being completely transparent with you. I made promises to, uh, to people. I made guarantees. I made, uh, I made assurances. So <laughs> the good news is a lot of people are listening to these things. The bad news is I need you to do this. Look how simple it is. I need you to subscribe. You go here to micro.com slash podcast. That's what it looks like. Mom, there, there he is, your son, his big giant face. Okay? All you have to do is go over here where it says subscribe. Click on iTunes. You can click on any of them, but iTunes is easy. Go down here, view in iTunes. Click on that. And you're there. Just like that. All you have to do once you see this screen, there's my big face again. And there's my big head. You just come right down there underneath and hit subscribe. And that's it. Boom. Bob's your uncle. Just like that. Just like that, you're subscribed. Would you do that, please, for the love of God? Would you please just do that? You do that, Mom. I'll keep my shirt buttoned up. I'll shave. I'll comb my hair. And whatever else you need. Uh, as for the rest of you, here's a story. And I'm going to read it to you right now. This originally premiered right over there on the podcast two months ago. But I prefer, uh, I prefer this format, to be perfectly honest with you. Are you ready? Then let us begin. What's more important? Being caffeinated or being hydrated? Is it possible to achieve both with coffee? I read conflicting reports. Some say the two things are diametrically opposed because of the diuretic effect brought about by caffeine. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure if hydration and caffeination are enemies, but rather two sides of the same coin. A story perhaps for another time. For now, there's this. John was having a rough evening. He'd been hung up on 300 times in less than three hours. It's hard to take that kind of rejection personally, even when you're working under an assumed name. As he listened to the phone ringing in his headset, John wondered how it had come to this. A talented musician, he left Kentucky to write love songs and sing power ballads with his rock band. Now, he was staring at a telemarketing script a clunky mess of words and sentences he'd never use in real life, but was nevertheless required to recite word for word. John hated the script. His musings, however, were interrupted by an elderly voice on the other end of the line. Hello? John cleared his throat and started reading. Hello, this is John Quartermain calling from Los Angeles, California. I'm calling this evening to inform you that you have been selected to win a free trip to Tahiti or a beautiful grandfather clock made of the finest wood and assembled by genuine craftsmen. How does that sound? John waited for the cursing and the click that usually followed his introduction, but the elderly gentleman was still on the line. Well, that sounds delightful, young man. I've always wanted to go to Tahiti. What do I have to do? So startled was John by the prospect of making an actual sale, he very nearly fell off his chair. Uh, Tahiti is a tropical paradise unlike any place on earth, he read. 
and we'll be happy to send you on an all-expense paid visit or forward to your home address the aforementioned grandfather clock. All you have to do is agree to purchase a gross of ballpoint pens. How does that sound? Well, that sounds like a lot of pens, young man. But if it gets me to Tahiti, let's do it. John couldn't believe it. He grabbed the order form and prepared to write up his very first sale as a professional telemarketer. But the old man had questions. Tell me something, son. How long will I get to stay in Tahiti? Is this a cruise, or will you fly me there? John knew that everyone who bought the pens got the clock. John also knew the clock was made of cork and press wood and held together with Kleenex and spit. But hey, for 99 bucks, 144 pens wasn't a terrible deal, right? John referred back to his script. Well, sir, he read, it really all depends on the luck of the draw. You could win the trip, or you could win the clock. The old man paused on the other end of the line, and John held his breath. Well, son, I'm on a fixed income, but tell me something. If I buy two grosses of pens, will it improve my chances of getting to Tahiti? There are many decisions in life that don't feel significant at the time, but when added up, turn you into the person you actually are. John, to his credit, couldn't go through with the sale. He told the old man the whole thing was a scam. Then he quit the telemarketing business and redoubled his efforts to become a rock star, which, in spite of his best efforts, did not pan out. John and his band did open for the Ramones and Iggy Pop and the Talking Heads, but that's as far as they got. If John really wanted to be famous, he'd have to try something different. But, as it turns out, something not entirely new. Remember the script that John hated so much as a telemarketer? Well, as it turns out, scripts were not the enemy after all. And the endless rejection he experienced on the telephone, well, that prepared him for the rejection every actor experiences in the course of any successful career. And yeah, John's career turned out to be quite the success thanks to the many scripts that John brought to life. It started with a small part in a creepy script about a place called Elm Street and led to a string of films that have so far grossed over $3 billion worldwide, which is why today John can play music whenever it suits him and live like the rock star he always thought he was. It's not bad for a former pen salesman who never sold a single pen. And something to think about the next time your phone rings in the middle of your dinner. Who knows who's really on the other end? It could be a pen salesman. Or it might just be the next Johnny Depp. Anyway, that's the way I heard it. What do you think, Mom? Do you know who Johnny Depp is? If you don't, the story probably wasn't that great. If you do, you're probably saying, oh, my goodness, what a surprise. Micro.com slash podcast to subscribe. Oh, one other thing, too. Lots and lots of uh, letters and, and notes coming in saying uh, my posts aren't popping up in people's news feeds the way they used to. That's because Facebook has done something involving the change of an algorithm. It's complicated, but it's the reason why I'm actually doing something I, I thought I would never do before, which is create a mailing list. If you want to be on it, it's a way for me to make sure you know stuff that's going on in my uh, misspent career. So you go to a news at microworks.com, news at microworks.com. I get the email. I'll send you back an email, then I'll know when to tell you, hey, the way I heard it's moving to Sundays, or hey, I'm doing a speech in Baltimore, which I am, by the way, on the 24th of September. Also doing one in New York on the 23rd of September, and one in Chicago on the 29th of September. <laughs> I woke up one morning and my life was out of control. Happy 4th. Have a great weekend. Bye.